Hey everyone, uh, so I've had a couple requests on how to set up a dev environment for Foundation 5. Now you might be thinking, you know, I can use CodeKit or I've got a couple of ideas about how I might set this up, but I'm going to encourage you to go ahead, go through the process of setting up a dev environment because maybe you don't want to use other tools at the moment, but you know, there's a lot of tools and there's a trend foundation included, where they're using command line tools. And so it's best for you to just learn how to get started right away. So I'm going to take you through the process. This is going to be using the newest OS, which is Mavericks uh, for Mac OS X. And I'm going to walk you through the process of how to install it step by step, uh, a dev environment so that you can use Foundation 5. Okay. So the first step is basically we want to start with um, Xcode. So you can do that by opening up the App Store, then click on Developer Tools, click on Xcode, and then click on the Install button. That's going to go ahead and take you through the install process. I'm not going to show it here, but this is the next step. It's called Homebrew, and Homebrew is the method that I prefer to install older apps, um, Ruby, this type of thing. And so it's a one kind of copy and paste line that we're going to go ahead and put into Terminal. And you'll see here we run this terminal command line, I'm just pasting it in, and that's it. So this is gonna install Homebrew. All right, it's gonna ask you for the password. This is the same password you use to normally install normal applications for your Mac. And we're gonna get this Xcode select command tools needs to be installed. So just hit agree, go through the process of letting it find the software and install. I'm not gonna show the whole process here, but you can imagine what's going to happen. So the next step in the process is to install RB ENV. So I prefer this over RVM. And the reason is I had a problem with RVM where it kind of ruined my entire dev installation. So I've been using RB ENV. I really like it. It's very easy to install from Homebrew. So the first thing you want to do is run brew doctor. Then we're going to run brew update. This is from the terminal. And now we just do brew install rbnv and ruby hyphen build. So the next step is I'm going to use rbnv and run init. Now, it says it automatically adds to the .bash profile. I found it wasn't necessary to do this in Mavericks. Um, your mileage may vary, but in older uh, Mac OS X operating systems, you do have to add this to your .bash underscore profile. And so the next step here is I'm going to use RBNV to install. And, and before we install, we want to list. So do RBNV install dash L, and I'm just using less, piping it to less so we can see. And I'm going to go ahead and install Ruby 2.0. 1.0. I'm going to copy and paste this so I can type in exactly the version that I want. It's the same thing, rbnv install, and just the version of Ruby that you want to install. So I'm just pasting this with command V, and here we go through the installation process. So the next step here, I'm going to run brew doctor again, just kind of bring everything up to date. Then I'll run brew update after running brew doctor. Okay, and so I'm going to use brew to install node. So just brew install node. That's all you need to do. And it's going to install both node.js and the npm, which is the node package manager, both of which are requirements for foundation five. Okay, so now that we're all set up, I'm gonna go ahead and do sudo gem install foundation. I'm gonna type in my password again, and this should install the foundation gem. And this is can get a little confusing. We're going back and forth between Ruby and Node, but just follow with me here. So what I do is I create a new project, so foundation new test project, and it's gonna give you the steps. So the first step is we need to install Bower. So we do sudo npm install dash g, which is for global Bower. And that's going to go ahead and install Bower. And so what I do is I go through this process and then I just hit the up arrow, which takes us to the last command in the terminal or in the command line or in bash or however you want to call that. And we're going to just keep going through kind of in a loop until we resolve all the dependencies. 
So here we go, we're done with Bower, and so I'm gonna do the same thing. Foundation, new, test project, and we'll see if we get another error. Okay, and so it says that we don't have permissions, that we need to install gem, so we'll do sudo gem install compass. So you might be thinking if you've installed Foundation on earlier versions of Mac OS X that it was a little bit different, right? And the difference is, is that in Foundation 5, they removed a lot of dependencies from the gem. So you have to kind of go through this process to get everything working. There we go. So it created our test project. I'm just going to CD into that project directory, run compass compile, which will generate the uh, CSS files from our SAS or SCSS files. So you have to do that first, it's not done automatically. So here we go, we have our foundation project set up. We compiled our SAS into CSS, and this is our base install. So for any new project that we wanna create from the SAS standalone, that's how we do it. Foundation, new, and then the project name. And so I hope you find this useful, and I hope that you explore a little bit more into the command line and into Bower, Node, Ruby, Ruby gems, because there's a lot of really wonderful tools there. Even if you're doing front end development, there's a lot of great tools that you can learn. And again, the, the tendency, the, the, the movement is towards a lot of tools, including Foundation 5, using more command line interface applications. So it's gonna be really great if you just learn how to do it. And this is a really great introduction to setting up a pretty robust um, development environment. So I hope you found it useful and I will talk to you next time.